Today in the news, we've got some Game Pass, some nanometers, and some VR. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Microsoft. It looks like they are going to adjust their pricing for Xbox services. We already currently have the Game Pass, which is 10 bucks a month, and Xbox Live Gold at the same price. According to Walking Cat on Twitter, Microsoft is going to release Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which combines both for 15 bucks a month. Honestly, this is a great thing to do, especially considering that a lot of people are subscribed to both at the same time, and considering that the all-digital Xbox One S is coming. One thing that was curious, though, was a comment by Brad Sams. Brad Sams is a trusted source in Microsoft information, and he commented on the Game Pass Ultimate leak, saying, now find the one for PC, to which Walking Cat said, found nothing about PC, and Brad Sams replied, yet. With all the rumors of the testing that we we've seen with Microsoft and Xbox games on Windows 10, maybe this is what they were testing, Game Pass on PC. A service like that would allow for people to play Xbox One games without owning an Xbox and at high quality. And we're not talking about game streaming here, we're talking about games downloaded on a PC and then running on them. If you think that this is far-fetched and that it would ruin Xbox, think again. PlayStation has been offering games on PC without a PlayStation for a long time via their PS Now subscription. It is at 720p though, and the games are getting streamed, but still, they did it. What do you guys think about Xbox Game Pass on PC? Let me know. Then we have TSMC, which just completed the possible. I mean, I didn't want to say impossible because it is possible, but nonetheless, really impressive. Anyways, they just announced that they have completed the infrastructure design for their five nanometer process. In the CPU industry, it's clear that TSMC is way in front of everyone else, with Intel Fabs struggling to get to 10 nanometers and Global Foundries, which just completely stopped working on seven nanometers and below. There's also Samsung, which is hard at work and plans to get to five nanometers by the second half of this year, and even four nanometers by the end of next year, but Samsung is not in the high performance computing game, only the low power one, which isn't to say that it, it's irrelevant since Zen 1 and Zen 2 were on the LP process. Anyways, back to TSMC, this process will enable up to 1.8 times the logic density of their already popular 7 nanometer process and would allow for a 15% increase in clock speeds due to the EUV process, which is apparently better. Now this is 100% speculation, but I think that AMD might jump on that as soon as it's available. Higher density means more chips on a wafer, means faster production and better yields. I suspect we're probably going to see 5 nanometers on Ryzen 4000. I mean, so far, AMD has taken every single opportunity to do a die shrink with Ryzen, and with their new chiplet design, yields aren't much of a factor since those chiplets are much more simple than a monolithic die. The only thing is that if we're at 5 nanometers now, what's next? I mean, we could probably get to 4 nanometers after that, but at 3 nanometers, we're entering quantum tunneling and leaking electrons. I guess that by then, we're probably going to have figured out a way to shield from quantum tunneling, but it's sure going to be an interesting decade. Then we have our favorite VR system of them all, Nintendo Labo VR. So Nintendo announced Labo VR last week, but this week we learned that both Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild are getting a VR segment. Super Mario Odyssey will get a few mini missions to complement the game and it looks like we won't actually get to play Mario. Looking at the preview video, you can see that we'll just be the camera and well, we'll move Mario around collecting music notes. As for Breath of the Wild, the whole game will be playable in VR, but once again, we're not going to be in Link's body. With the preview available now, you can see Link in a normal distance, which will mean that we'll probably act as the camera, and I just know that this will feel terrible. I mean, the only VR demos in which I felt horrible are the ones where you can move the camera with the joystick independent of your head, and where you have to move using the joystick. Plus, with the resolution and the refresh rate of the Switch, this will be barf city for me. Also, I'm not sure if head straps are included, so be prepared to play the game like this. Imagine hours of Breath of the Wild in this position. You'll get buff shoulders though, and biceps. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the news. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to drop a like and a comment down below. You can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel, it'd be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty, and I'll see you guys on the next one. I can almost lift my whole arm.